Hello, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong. I wanted to make a follow-up video to my previous one on COVID-19. So I will cover three topics. So the first, the possible long-term adverse effects of COVID-19. Second, after having COVID-19, is there any chance of second infection? And three, a review of the use of the effectiveness of wearing masks. First, a disclaimer. This is not medical advice. I'm just highlighting reports of interest for your information. Do note that I have added links in the description for your reference to everything that I talk about. So I've heard some suggestions of people going out to get the virus to gain immunity. However, the coronavirus is not a normal flu, and it may be that you do not make a full recovery. In a report from the Infectious Disease Center at the Princess Margaret Hospital in Hong Kong, they studied 12 people who had been infected with COVID-19 and then recovered. However, it was found that in about 25% of the patients, their lung capacity had been reduced by 20 to 30 percent and they would get out of breath even if only walking briskly. A study in China looked at patients who had recovered from COVID-19. As we can see here, it found that there were still signs on a tomographic scan of liquid in the lungs showing that the lung was still affected. Another symptom which is now being associated with coronavirus is loss of taste and smell. It's still too early to say, but according to Dr. Claire Hopkins, of King's College London, up to 30% of people will, is, will experience continued loss of smell and taste after recovery from a viral infection. Considering in many countries medical capacity is already full or overloaded, the priority is to reduce the risk of more people getting infected and to lower the burden of on the medical facilities. All medical staff, like doctors and nurses, are fighting for us in the front line. What we can do to help is to ensure that we do not get infected or spread the infection to other people. So is there any chance of getting reinfected? So there's no consensus on this at the moment and expert opinion seems to be that having the disease once does come for immunity at least for a while. There is also a study which looked at rhesus monkeys and found that monkeys that have been infected once did have immunity from reinfection. However there have been a few cases where it does seem that a person who appeared to have been cured was later tested positive with, for the virus. One was in Japan where a woman was admitted to hospital on January 29 and released on Feb 1. She was then tested again on Feb 6 and found to have the virus. Another case was in South Korea where a 73 year old woman was released from hospital apparently having made a full recovery only to be readmitted five days later. There are, have also been cases in China, in particular one man who appeared to have recovered, was discharged, and then suddenly fell ill and died five days later. So more study is required, but it does seem that reinfection may be possible. And now a review of the effectiveness of wearing a mask. So in my previous video, I discussed whether a surgical mask did provide a benefit in slowing the spread of COVID-19, both by protecting the wearer from infection and by reducing the chance of spreading the infection, especially if you have the disease but do not have the symptoms yet or don't have the symptoms at all, for which there are an estimate of up to one, one in four people. So the CDC in the US has now changed its mind to recommend that people wear masks and President Trump also gave the same message. The WHO is also reconsidering. Though at this time the UK has not. I still find the messaging illogical in that, for example, the UK is saying masks are not effective and we need them for the health staff. So if, you are, if they are not effective, then why do health staff need them? And if they are effective, why should ordinary citizens not protect themselves and prevent infecting others? I also wanted to share this graph, which shows the speed of spread of coronavirus in various countries and how those that use masks show a slower increase than those that do not use masks. Of course, mask wearing is only one of the measures taken, but it certainly does seem to help. And finally on this topic, there was recently a study published in, in Nature which looked at the effectiveness of masks in slowing down the spread of the virus. And here are some quotes from that report. Our findings indicate that surgical masks can efficaciously reduce the emission of influenza virus particles into the environment in respiratory droplets, but not in aerosols. Uh, so for COVID-19, there is definitely agreement that air, uh, droplets do are part of the spread, but it's not clear whether aerosols are or not at this point. 
Also, we, we demonstrated the efficacy of surgical masks to reduce coronavirus detection and viral copies in large respiratory droplets and in aerosols. This has important implications for control of COVID-19, suggesting that surgical face masks could be used by ill people to reduce onward transmission. I would like to close with a reminder that good hand hygiene is one of the best ways to restrict the spread of the virus. Here are some pictures showing how germs survive on, on a hand during the in, incomplete wash and, and can be cleaned by doing the process properly. There are a number of videos on how best to wash your hands on the web and I've linked to one of them below. So I'd like to thank you for watching the video and hope that you found it useful. It's tough time now and I believe that if we do our best together to protect ourselves, our family and those around us, we can beat the virus. I hope that you stay safe and thank you and talk to you all soon.